everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining. I'm Catherine, and today I'm here to review the first, not one, not two, but three books in the Marked Men series. So those books are um, Rule is the first book, Jet is the second book, and Rome is the third book. I fell in love with these characters. Oh my god. The only, I have one complaint, and I will get to that later. Um, but anyway, so these, these books are set in the type of way for series that I love reading. Um, Abby Glines does it really well, um, M. Wheaton does it really well. Who else does it really well? Um, I don't know who else does it really well. Sarah Dessen does it to some extent, but it's the series set up where you have your first book and then each subsequent book is about a character from the book before set as the main character instead of just a supporting character or a like slightly mentioned character and Sarah doesn't do does it more in the reverse way like she has characters that come back in two books later um Stephanie Perkins Stephanie Perkins does that really well too um but I love that about a book I love when I'm able to read a book and then fall in love with it fall in love with the characters and then be able to read more about the characters that I really loved since I've sometimes more than others have gotten enough of the other characters that I read in the book I just finished. Um, so yes, I loved that. And these, these books are just, they make me want to do things that I may not necessarily want to do on a regular basis. Uh, namely, getting a tattoo. All of them, hence the name Marked Men, either work or are affiliated with a tattoo parlor set in Colorado, I believe, um, and it's just, yeah, boys and tattoos are just hot, let's face it, there's the, yeah, that's the way of life, I, I suppose. So the reason I'm doing these books together as opposed to three separate reviews is one, it would take way too long, two, I would never get to it, and three, I really just want to get the reviews out of the way so I can read the next books and do separate reviews on them and not have had months go by and yeah because it's it's been a while I have I've read these books in the summer they are the ideal summer read especially if you're just wanting to like lounge on a beach chair somewhere I I fell in love with them um and I I really can't wait I have the next two books sitting on my shelf waiting to be read and I believe the sixth book is coming out soon soon-ish. If it's not out already, I'm really bad at this. Um, but anyways, yeah, let's, let's get to the books. So, the only thing I don't like about these books is the pattern that they tend to fall into. So, at least with these three, maybe not... No, yeah, even the third one. It's always like, the girl is the good girl. Um, and the boy is the bad boy and, but he's really a good guy underneath and he doesn't want to ruin the girl's life by having her be with him and it's just a lot of pulling and pushing and in more ways than one, you cannot be young to read this, let me tell you. Um, but it, I mean, in the end, you know they're going to end up together, but it's just, there's, it's almost, I, I love these books, but the formula's kind of getting tired and maybe it's because this just seems to be the way that a lot of new adult books are is that you know it's it's either it's the good person and the bad person and you know that they need to be together and one of them knows that they need to be together but the other one's like no I'm bad for you you're too good for me and a lot of drama ensues when they could have just admitted it to themselves from the beginning and saved everybody a lot of time and heartache yeah if you know of books that don't conform to this, can you let me know because I'd like to read them and um, see how much I like them because, let's face it, even though it is getting a little tired, um, I am completely addicted to this type of story and it's just like butterflies inside. I'm like, oh, they get together in the end, you know? Yeah, anyway. So, these books are written by Jay Crownover. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the first time I saw Jay Crownover's name as the author name, I thought it was a guy. Um, that's really, um, that's, that's a gross assumption that I made and I really shouldn't have made it because I'm, I remember like the first time I ever saw these books and chapters, I was like, what a guy wrote this, Psh, whatever. And then just like left. 
Um, it wasn't until many of my blogging peoples told me how awesome these books are that I was like, yes, I will go try them. And I love them, so I'm definitely happy I did it. Um, these are definitely not books for anyone who is too young to read about explicit sex. There's a lot of P and a lot of V and a lot of P and V in this, and if you're too young, you really shouldn't be reading them at all. I do not condone young people reading them. Um, if I had a young person ever pick this up at my house, I would probably smack it very, very hard from their hands and direct them in the direction of like a Sweet Valley Twins book, a uh, girl or a guy, doesn't matter who. I'll be like, no, this, this is more your speed, just read it. Um, that being said, they are awesome new adult books. Um, I classify them as new adult as opposed to adult simply because the main characters are more so like university age. Um, a lot of them actually are in university. Uh, but yeah, I mean they're they're in the romance section at your local bookstore probably. So you, you, can, you can garner a lot from that if you want to how this plays out. You know, I, I have to admit that between the three, as much as I love the first book and it really got me into reading the whole series, I really, really enjoyed the third book because it was slightly different from the first two. Um, I get it for you. So this one, it's about the big brother of the guy from the first book and it's he's you know recently discharged from the army and has some health problems and some like PTSD but it was more the female character that really um really made me love this book she is just like such a spitfire doesn't take any bs from anyone like totally calls this guy in like this He's supposed to be like this huge hulking guy and she's super petite. She calls him on all his bullshit and she doesn't let him get away with anything. And I just, I love that from female characters. I find that a lot of times um, female characters can take on the damsel in distress type. Um, and they, they kind of squelch their inner voices in order to be liked more by the the pretty boy and the main love interest and I found that this wasn't the case. If anything, um, the two of them never would have ended up together had the events of this book not happened and I just, I liked the fact that it was different because of that. And I mean each of the books are, are, are different in that way too, like there's, there's slight differences. Um, the characters I find are well, they can be slightly over the top as far as, you know, their their story, their backgrounds go. Um, most, most new adult books are like that. So, I mean, it's just kind of just the way things are. But I find that Jay Cronover really does it well. She doesn't go too over the top. Um, it's just the right amount of slight craziness to most of the characters. Um, slight ridiculousness. Um but completely grounded in real life situations um and i really really loved that within them like these characters seem totally believable aside from their perfect good look i definitely would not recommend this book to anyone who is adverse to reading anything at all about tattoos or piercings of any type and of any place on the body because it does so explicitly in some parts and I mean I'm totally for it I was just like ah, funny but I can see a lot of people getting offended by this um, some people even more so than the actual sex scenes simply because while sex seems to be more the norm in new adult and adult books um, explicitly detailing how um, a woman's genitalia is pierced, maybe not so much. But that's part of the reason why I love these books is that there's no boundaries when it comes to stuff like that. And it is awesome. I just like, I majorly applaud the author for having the balls to do that uh, figuratively, of course. These books really do have a little bit of everything when it comes to the romance genre. Um, there's always that slight bit of like mystery, a very light mystery as to what the backgrounds of some of these people, 
these characters are. Um, you know, there's there's always the shrouded in secrecy, it seems. Um, and then it comes to light and it's a part of the plot twist in the book and all that stuff. But there's a lot of great romance and friendship and and dealing with crazy situations that many, many, many women especially deal with, um, like abusive boyfriends and like stalkers and stuff, and dealing with it kind of like in a way that lets a reader know who's had to go through with it. I haven't, thank God, but I'm sure other people have that, you know, it's it's okay, it happens to people, and it I can see it, it helping a lot of people, um, some books more than others, d depending on what the, the topic was, but yeah really good that way for sure. They are one of my guiltiest pleasures and I'm actually not really guilty about it at all so I need to think of another name that's not guilty pleasure for these books. Um, but I would definitely suggest them to anyone who wants to kind of dive into the new adult genre, seeing what it's about. It has tattooed hotness and fun metal bands and like crazy love ballads and it's just awesome. Awesome between the pages, let's face it. The sex scenes aren't that bad either. So until next time, happy reading guys and let me know down below if you've read these, if you like them, if you didn't like them, open up the lines of conversation. Uh, and yeah, let me know if you're going to check them out too because then I can open up the lines of conversation and be like, so how'd you like them? Is this that guy not super hot or what? Happy reading, everybody.